raising the food makers Jedi signal above the market noise. People care about justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, how to activate them as ambassadors across the channels. I am now welcoming our friend and today's moderator of the discussion, Perry Kramer on the virtual stage. Perry is the program director at Food, Fund, Food System 6. She has led marketing and operation teams as well as product launches in the organic food industry for over a decade. Prior to joining Food System 6, Perry worked for Whole Foods Market, Revolution Foods, and for the restaurant and marketing consultancies. An early passion for cooking led her to study food equity and farming, and ultimately to build a career in working with ethical businesses that support sustainable food systems. I'm so excited to have you with us here, and Perry, please welcome all the other panelists on the stage and take it away from here. Thank you so much, Angie. Um, as Angie shared, I'm Perry. Um, I'm from Food System 6. We are a national uh, program that accelerates um, innovations all across the country. We work to democratize wealth in frontline communities. And really, our work is to endeavor to build a food system that is just and regenerative. Um, we advocate on behalf of frontline innovators, entrepreneurs, and nonprofit leaders, um, and we hope to provide them with an ecosystem of support. Um, a little bit about Food System 6 before I jump in. Um, we um, have a portfolio of 50 entrepreneurs, um, both, uh, both for-profit and nonprofit. 50% are women, 45% BIPOC and and um, led in serving. And um, we've worked with entrepreneurs to help raise over $40 million in blended capital from philanthropic to venture funding. So I am so excited to be here today with three amazing people. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce them really quickly and then hand it over to all of them to, um, to share a bit more about themselves, but I'll start with Reem, who I have known the longest and admired um, for, for so many years. Um, Reem is the founder of Reem's California, um, a, an Arab bakery and restaurant in the Bay Area um, that spreads um, uh, that spreads and connects people um, and cultures to the warmth of Arab hospitality. Um, she and Zaina Hindi were in our most recent cohort, um, our seventh cohort at Food System 6, and I'm so happy to have her with us today. Um, we'll, we'll also be joined by, um, by Kiba Conte um, of Red Bay Coffee and um, Jason Mercer of Chicago's Cleveland Avenue. And I'll introduce them a little bit once I see them pop up on the screen. Jason um, is from Chicago's Cleveland Avenue. He focuses on financial diligence and investment opportunities for the finance team. Cleveland Avenue um, is a um, super cool organ organization um, that um, I have only um, got to know recently, but um, they provide um, uh, tons of uh, financial resources, expertise, and individual support for entrepreneurs. So um, Jason, I'll let you share a little bit about yourself too. Sure, um, and thank you for, uh, for having me. Um, yes, Cleveland Avenue, we were founded by Mr. Don Thompson, his wife, Liz Thompson, um, Don being the former CEO of McDonald's. Um, and I jokingly say, um, you know, I guess when you're CEO being like a, a football coach, when you, you leave one job, you either become another coach or you go be, do TV. And uh, venture capital is like you're doing TV of uh, the business world. Uh, so he decided he wasn't gonna go, you know, run or, you know, be a CEO again. Uh, started a venture capital firm where he really focuses on food, bev, and adjacent technology businesses. Um, a lot of that comes from his great experience working with um, Chipotle as they kind of incubated that out of McDonald's. Um, and it's just great working with uh, various, you know, management teams to help them and really grow their businesses. Um, I'd say we're a little different from the typical venture capital in that uh, we very much dive into uh, supporting from supply chain, raw materials, uh, sales, um, you name it, being that most of us are industry guys versus bankers or things like that in the venture capital space. Um, I focus on our uh, Cast Us Fund. So we have two funds, um, our food and beverage fund, which is the larger sum of dollars that we have, um, of which um, another panelist, Kiba, is actually within that fund. So it's great to have him here. Um, that's the fund that we also did Beyond Meat out of. Uh, Cast Us was after the success of our first fund, we really wanted to be more agents of change, driving dollars of support to Black, Latinx, and women entrepreneurs. We do have a, a focus on Chicago land, but uh, we are doing uh, nationwide investments. Uh, with that fund, we're doing a little bit more down market earlier stage. And we're getting pretty much industry agnostic. So food and beverage will always be our main real house, but we are looking at tech, healthcare, other things. 
uh, being that we're more focused on the who, uh, being black, brown, and women, as opposed to so industry focused. Uh, I leave the diligence for that team. Um, I guess I'll stop there. Just again, excited to talk about, you know, Cleveland Avenue, Cast Us, and uh, my experience. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. And Reem, I'm hoping that you can share, you know, you've so, so much I think has happened with Reem's California this year. And I'm hoping you can share a little bit about, you know, what that experience has been like this year, um, you know, kind of coming coming into our like second year of COVID, all the different initiatives that you, you've been rolling out, um, things that you're thinking of, celebrations, all the, please share with the group. I know we're so interested to hear. Yeah. Um... Yeah, maybe it'll be helpful for, for those who are uh, less familiar with Reams to talk a little bit sort of of how we got here. Um, so as Perry mentioned, we're an Arab street corner bakery and restaurant concept in Oakland and San with locations in Oakland and San Francisco. Um, Reams, uh, prior to my culinary background, I was actually in the nonprofit sector and as a community organizer. So the sort of mission of Reams was never to be just a restaurant. It was supposed to be a sort of conduit for change. Um, our vision has always been to build strong, resilient community through good jobs, nourishing food, and a sanctuary space. So when we sort of opened our first brick and mortar in 2017, we had started off as a very, very small farmer's market operation and experienced really quick growth. And when we opened our first brick and mortar in Oakland uh, in 2017, our vision was that sort of long, um, you know, 15, 20 year plan. Um, and we were very fortunate to have done that to create this sort of anchor space and um, to build those really amazing jobs, particularly for the most marginalized parts of our community, right? Um, Black, Indigenous, BIPOC communities, right? Um, and then COVID hit, you know, right in 2020, we had set this 10 year plan and this 10 year vision of, you know, we're gonna do all these things. We're gonna be worker owned at the 10 year mark. We're, um, we're gonna really kind of fine tune our restaurant operations. And now that we have that down, we're gonna try to get reams into people's homes and we're really gonna try to scale up. So these, these jobs, the people that were growing with reams over the last five years had a pathway to grow with the company. Um, and then COVID sort of, <laughs> <laughs> came um, and you know though it sort of I mean no nobody in the food industry or the restaurant industry would tell you that that was a blessing <laughs> everybody you know uh, it would be a lie to say that it wasn't traumatizing but it was sort of a divine intervention for us in thinking about the sustainability of the restaurant model we knew that um, we sort of inherited these really broken systems that were really not designed uh, for equity or for racial justice. And so, uh, you know, in 2020, we sort of made uh, really, really hard decisions about sort of pivoting from the restaurant model to a more high level commissary model. And um, between 2020 and 2021, we've made, you know, we were doing uh, over 100,000 meals a year for the most food insecure parts of our population and getting revenue. Like we were fulfilling our mission. It just looked a little different. Um, and by that, we're able to kind of fulfill uh, our promise to our workers to um, maintain those good jobs, to keep those good jobs and, um, uh, and maintain their commitment to the organization. And um, the other sort of big, uh, two other big sort of pivots that we made as we were sort of uh, we, we had the unfortunate uh, timing of opening a restaurant right like three days before the shutdown. So, you know, we kind of applied some of the learnings of Oakland to that restaurant model in San Francisco, but we also uh, leaned in on a wholesale model to, to really get uh, reams into the homes <laughs> of many, as many people as we can to really um, speak to a customer base that couldn't come to our restaurant. So that was a big one, sort of redefining hospitality and what that meant to us in a time of pandemic. And then the third thing was really kind of doubling down on being more people invested. Uh, we wanted to be worker owner 10 years ago and we realized, what if we build it with them? Reams model has always been about building with our community. Um, let's build it with our employees so that, you know, me as the sole entrepreneur business owner didn't have to 
struggle on behalf of my workers, but rather struggle with them. And so we launched a uh, apprenticeship program that we were very lucky to have gotten some funding for. Uh, we have 18 people in that apprenticeship program. Our employees are learning how to be business owners, learning about the systems that got us here in the first place, and really sort of taking ownership of Reams in a way that we had never had before. So. Um, we are in the midst of sort of exploring a transition to a work, more worker owned model. Um, and we have had almost 100% retention um, since uh, the pandemic until now, which I think is a big feat, especially for the restaurant industry where staffing is such a hard thing. So yeah, lots to celebrate. I'm actually here in the airport uh, going to New York City because Bon Appetit actually recognized the apprenticeship program as something that's changing. So just to us that flags that the industry is hungry for other models that are more sustainable for the restaurant industry. So it's exciting to kind of, it's it's messy and it's hard, but it's exciting to kind of, uh, you know, navigate that and sort of be the, um, you know, thought leaders in that. Uh -huh. Not just myself, but my whole team at Reams. So I'll stop Hi. there. Well, thank you so much, Rima. I just want to add that if you want to see all the wonderful people, some of whom are in the, the apprenticeship program, you can open the most recent copy of Bon Appetit. And there's a beautiful picture of Reem um, and the whole team, all of the leaders at Reem's. And I do just want to say that the very fact that you can say that there's 100% retention when so many people nowadays are looking for the next gig, they, you know, the word, the great resignation is like floating around everywhere everywhere but that is something to be so deeply proud of and i i think that if i just think about what if all the all the people out there who could adopt your model and what more sustainable businesses that they that they could have and it's it's just it's just an amazing thing that you're modeling for so many people so just wanted to say thank you and um and then i thought we could just jump in a little bit um uh jason you mentioned really briefly the cast program. I was hoping you could share a little bit more about that and specifically like, you know, some interesting examples of different companies that you're working with. Sure, sure. Um, Cast Us is the name. It actually is a pretty cool, I guess, initiative, I guess, fun. Uh, I mean, it is a fun um, Cleveland Avenue State Treasurer's Urban Success Program. So uh, when Donna and Liz were kind of thinking about the idea of how they could do more from an investing side of things, they actually uh, were talking with the state treasurer of Illinois um, who is our essentially our lead LP. So the state of Illinois has a uh, fund called the Illinois Growth and Innovation Fund, ILGIF, and they are lead LP. Um, so they're actually kind of part of the name. Um, so that's kind of where Cast Us comes from. And then internally, we really look at it as Cast Us is really like a, I'm an athlete, but I kind of took more of a theatrical thing that was Cast Us. Put us in the play. Let us, let us get a role. Let us show our skills. Let us get in the game. And if you get one role, one, one position in a, in, a, in, a, in a production, you'll get more. Cast Us. So that's kind of how we think about it. Um, so with that, we are very much focused. Um, the targets are to be around 75% Black or Latinx, 50% uh, women, and then another large percentage being in the Chicago South and West Sides, which are predominantly Black and Latinx uh, spaces. Um, so again, another percentage uh, will be outside of that. And I say that just to say, yes, we are focused on a, the region uh, being here, but great companies that are Black and Brown are led by women across the nation. We want to meet them. Um, from, I guess, just kind of the tactical parts from a funding side of things, uh, really we kind of use uh, a run rate around 250K as kind of the, the, the lower threshold. Uh, we've gone lower than that, but typically do not. Um, so that could be, and we're really flexible on that. That could be a PO that we think is going to show us that on a run rate basis. It could be the last few months of sales. Um, but that is the one thing I think that is interesting because we know people of color um, need that probably that first 20K, that first 50K. Uh, I mean, that's just not our style, but definitely as you're going from, you know, you know, very small to some growth, we want to meet as many folks as possible. Um, again, with the idea that uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, people of color and women don't get the same, you know, shake when they get to that investment table. A lot of that has to do with investment professionals um, looking a lot different than the folks that are on this call right here. Um, so I think that is one of the other things from Cast Us. We are a very diverse team, women, black, brown, you name it, um, across Cleveland Avenue, very diverse firm. Um, and we want our investments to look the same, um, especially when it comes to the Cast Us uh, Fund. Um, I think I had mentioned it is $70 million. So, you know, a decent amount uh, to kind of spread out. 
from a check size perspective, we've gone as low as 250K to a couple million dollars. Um, so, you know, pretty wide range that could be, you know, very much pre C to a, a smaller series A. Um, I think that's kind of more like the tactical pieces from, I guess, a heart or passion standpoint. Um, I just keep coming back to it. We want to be um, a place that um, looks to see the next great businesses um, that are that are focused that not are focused on but that are started by Black, Brown, and women. Um, and if even better, if they are products and services that are targeting that market, does it have to be? Uh, but that is very much a part of our plan. Uh, but if you are a Caucasian male and you are doing some great business in a certain area, or you're hiring. Uh, people of that uh, community, or you're going to put a manufacturing facility in Southside Chicago, we want to talk to you too. It's more about the vision of who is um, I guess generating that wealth, generating that jobs, generating opportunities in communities. Um, that is of more importance to me. Um, so I hope that answered your question. I could talk about it all day, but I, I wanted to give that broad answer and can go deeper um, if you got particular topics you'd like me to hit upon. Yeah, well, I was just wondering, are there like a, you know, two, one or two? Oh, one or so two, yeah, sorry about that. I'm always, I'm always like, ready to cool. hype some of our yeah. companies. I, I left that. That's the most important part. Yeah, I was, I was like, um, I, I want to hear some of these exciting people. I want to learn about them. I can't talk and type at the same time. My brain doesn't work. <laughs> um, so, so far we've done um, six investments. you got a few that are in the process of like, okay, can't talk about them yet. Uh, we've done six investments, some that I'm really excited about. One is IO Foods. Um, they are bringing West African flavored and inspired dishes to uh, retail grocery. Right now, they have three stews of frozen food, jollof rice, cassava leaf stew, and a goosey stew uh, that are available predominantly mostly in like the Midwest. And like uh, we have a grocery store, Jewel, uh, Mariano's, that's within the Kroger family. But literally yesterday, they just they went into most targets. Um, I need to get the exact regions. Uh, but Target is, I say, is a retailer, really leaned into kind of all things kind of black and brown the last year. Uh, but they recently are going to Target and growing, I think, nationwide with Kroger soon. Um, I think the product is pretty darn good. I think what's interesting, if you are truly of the West African, um, you know, if you're used to that flavors, you get the flavor, but it won't be your grandma's jollof. And I think that's kind of the tough part is, you know, when you're going mainstream, like how mainstream before you're, you know, you know, 100% uh, authentic. But again, I love the product. Um, they've gone from three SKUs to seven over the last year, actually got some hot sauces that are also going into market. So just really love that organization. Um, started by a husband and wife, fan, uh, husband and wife uh, duo here um, in Southside Chicago. Uh, Pratit Spencer came from the General Mills background. So um, you know, all the brand management marketing there and her husband kind of a serial entrepreneur. Um, so just really love it. So that's IO Foods. Um, another one is um, Whole and Free Foods goes by the name um, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, supply chain capital is also in there with us. So we'd love to have those ladies uh, um, um, also there. And they bring so much vast experience in the supply chain um, world. Um, another one is Whole and Free Foods, but goes by Everybody Eat. Uh, they're basically our snack cracker or snack thin um, that's free from the top 14 allergens plus corn. Uh, so really their slogan is Everybody Eat, as in, you know, a whole family can eat from the same bowl and essentially not have to worry about allergens. Uh, one cool thing about them is in a world where so many food companies uh, are co-packing to get started because you kind of need to, they've actually made the daring uh, challenge or I guess decision uh, to produce uh, in-house from the start. And that's really around making sure that their products can hold up to all their uh, claims. Um, so that's one that has been awesome. Their, their, their facility is right on the west side of Chicago. Um, the full team of factory workers for the most part is black and brown. And some of the stories they've had coming out of there just uh, if you know about Chicago, some of the craziness that happens during the summer, um, and, and it's weird talking about it, but it, it's tough. They, they put out a report that said over 80%, and, and we're talking about a staff of about 25 people were touched. And this means family, friends, whatever, by, by, by violence in Chicago this summer. And that is, you know, kind of became a safe haven of a steady job, someone that can come, they know it's safe. Um, so that's another company that I love, both of those in the food space. Uh, but we do have two healthcare companies that are started by Black and Brown uh, founders. One is called Drugview. Uh, they do autoimmune diseases. So if you think about all the things we've heard with COVID, one of the things with clinical trials is it's, it's difficult for these pharma companies to get Black and Brown women into the in and through the clinical trial process. There's a lot of noted cases of drugs not working because they didn't they they didn't test a wide enough population in the United States. Um, they're addressing that um, and doing pretty well. Um, so those are three that I really love that are really touching upon uh, where we want to be. Again, founded by Black, Brown, and women, but a lot of the products, you know, either have that cultural um, lens or that family lens or looking to 
create product services uh, that are that are focused on those folks. Um, so just awesome. really love it. So yes. Yeah, thank you so much, Jason. Oh my gosh, I want to like hear about all these companies forever but there'll be some time in the breakout room so if you're interested you can kind of you can if anyone in the audience wants to ask more questions please do so in the breakout room but i just want to end with reem i think we have a, just like two or three more minutes before we have to go to breakout rooms but um i was hoping reem that you could just share like with us with the audience today like you know how can people really be an ally in the entrepreneurial system to support um bipoc businesses like how can every person in the system like what are some what are some of the like challenges and things that you faced and like how can people kind of break through those and make the system more equitable for everyone yeah i mean this is an ongoing question i think that um you know reams wants to be a part of an ecosystem right like we can't do this on our own on an island and um you know, and and yeah, we understand that there are many barriers of privilege of everybody on that in that ecosystem, right? So from like the investor standpoint, I think, you know, part of it is looking at sort of how we value money and the flow of money and how we value labor. Um, you know, it's the cost of food and the cost of uh, is just more expensive. <laughs> And we need to kind of wrap our brains around what that looks like. Uh, otherwise, it's it's it will continue a race to the bottom. I think that um, while it's amazing that we have sort of highlighted uh, POC entrepreneurs like myself and and people that I'm I'm really trying to build, generate wealth for my workers in a way that's not just a token, you know, token thing. Um, that is going to cost money. Um, I, I, like Reams has been. Uh, you know, we tried to fundraise, I think that for a woman of color, it's like I have to do <laughs> five times, 10 times more than uh, my counterparts to prove that I have a winning model. And like how many James Beard awards <laughs> or whatever do I have to show to know that we have a winning model? Um, so we've sort of uh, went internal and been like, okay, here's the writing on the wall. Here are how we define success and getting investors to see that as success with us and not just in dollar signs. Um, the dollar signs for us is it's a long game. Um, and if we don't, you know, if, if we don't invest in our people, <laughs> um, it's going to implode the same way the restaurant industry imploded right before COVID. Um, so I think, yeah, investors sort of not just throwing dollars at us, but throwing knowledge and resources and being partners with workers and entrepreneurs and vendors like all of us need that wealth there's a gap uh, in the wealth of knowledge and expertise and how to get to our vision we have the vision so <laughs> um, being our partners in that vision i think is sort of the the thing that i'm trying to connect with investors i want people to be my partners for the long run Mm -hmm. um but we also need those that that knowledge gap that you know i mean it's like trying to train my employees and everything that i'm still learning as an entrepreneur uh, because i've had barriers you know to that knowledge i, I think you know it's just going to end up tokenizing us you know <laughs> so we want partners for the long a long haul and i think the more investors who really are you know care about sort of the the world that we're trying to build which is you know bringing people from the margins to the center um they have to invest in that long-term vision too so i hope that answers your question yes a little it, it, there. yes it definitely <laughs> does reem and i and i think so much of it is that when we're truly investing in innovations that that share power share agency that the, the we everything all win. looks different if we all win and it we all win and it looks different and it looks better the outcomes yeah. are better but they're not what the system has been used to so right. i think it's so important to i thank you so much um i i saw that kiba came in too and i know that we have to go into our breakout rooms but i'll priyanka i'll just uh, hand it over to you and just want to say thank you so much Thank you so much. This is such an inspiring and an enriching discussion. It totally sets the stage for our program today.